I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. If I have to beg and plead for your sympathy, I don't mind because you mean that much to me. Ain't too proud to beg. Sweet darling, please don't leave me, girl. Imagine if you walked into an audition and sounded like this. Ain't too proud to plead, baby, baby. Please don't leave me, girl. Not too bad if I do say so myself. Girl, go on and say so. But I may be a little bit biased, okay? So I definitely did that. And then all of a sudden, you hear these two little letters in this one little word, no. What would you do? Hope's dreams and aspirations crushed. What would you do? Uh, after I pick my face up off the floor, that's why we're here, y'all, because I was giving that word no too much power. Let me explain. I'm the second oldest of six boys in my family, and we all love to sing. You have a pretty big family. Yeah. My grandmama told me I had over 200 first cousins. Believe that. <laughs> but one day we was at home, me and my brother, and we were at the dinner table, playing around and singing. So mom said, hey, y'all need to take that outside. So that's what we did. We have been singing all around the town of Flint, Michigan, that's where I'm from. Talent shows, we won most of them. I thought you said you lost a few. Girl, I ain't here to talk about them two I lost. I'm talking about all the ones we won. Okay. And I got a first cousin that was in a group ready for the world back in the 80s. They were the platinum selling group. Had a couple number one hits, Old oh, Sheila, Tonight, Love You Down. Some of y'all may know them, some of y'all may not. But he took us in the studio and we produced the demo. We took that demo and drove all the way to New York. When we got there, we met with a big pine music mogul named Clive Davis. Clive then produced some hits and some big name artists. So we sitting in the office like we're about to become the next Jackson Five. That's what we thought. They took the demo, they listened to him. They came back to us, they said, hey, we're going to get back with y'all. So we turned the car around and drove all the way back to Flint, Michigan. When we got there, we waited. We started rehearsal, started trying to groom in on our talents. They called us maybe two, three days later, maybe even a week. But they called us and told us them two letters in that one word, y'all. They told us, no. Nah. So I had to pivot, which is how I got here. Now, he didn't get there by himself. I got there, too. My family is not as much of a reality TV show as his is. Why you got to talk about my family now? <laughs> but I'm just a little girl from a small town, Saginaw, Michigan, that dared to dream. I'm the youngest of three, and one of my earliest aspirations was to be a lawyer. Not just any lawyer, but an entertainment lawyer. I actually, not because I like to argue. Girl, you love to argue. Hey, but I think I wanted to be the next Matlock. And did I just age myself by saying that? <laughs> Maybe I should have said Johnny Cochran. OK, anyway. So I wanted to be a lawyer. And it was just something about that platform that intrigued me. But when I heard that it was seven years of school, it was those two little letters and that one little word in my head it was like, that would be a no for me. That's just not going to work. But what was I going to do? Because I still wanted to be in the entertainment field. I wanted to have the baddest wardrobe. I wanted to fly around different cities, be on a huge platform. So what was I going to do? I could sing a little bit. A little? I hope you ain't about to sing for these people. Okay. I could act just a little bit. You're all right with acting. But what I could do really well was write. I was a writer. I was writing and winning awards from first grade. My first grade teacher felt that I would be a great storyteller. So that's what I decided to do. So how was I going to mesh the entertainment field with writing? So I decided to write scripts for TV shows. 
I wrote for a little known TV show that you guys might have heard of, The Cosby Show. <laughs> Things were going well. I secured an agent. I was told that I wasn't gonna be able to do that, but I did. Life was going good. I was thinking I was on my way to Beverly Hills. I was gonna pack it up and move to Beverly. <laughs> I sent in another script for another TV show, A Different World, but this time, things didn't happen so good. I got rejected. And my hopes, dreams, and aspirations, moving to Beverly, driving down Rodeo, having the baddest car, the flyest wardrobe, because I'm a black belt shopper, it wasn't gonna happen for me. So what did I have to do? I had to pivot. You don't know me, but I'm your brother. I was raised here in this living hell. See, you don't know my kind in your world. Fairly soon time will tell. I told y'all we like to sing. Yeah, I wasn't good. kidding. You're singing again. Okay. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look, here we go again. Starting my life out. I got married. I started having kids. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. But shortly after I moved, all my family had to come. I'm talking about cousins, brothers, uncles, aunties. Everybody. I looked up and everybody was there. Everybody, yeah. And I told y'all, me and my family like to sing. So we do little get-togethers, and we start singing and harmonizing. We had a get-together down here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we were singing, we was harmonizing, we, we were feeling each other. Somebody said, y'all ought to put a group together. We thought about it, we started singing again, thought about it, looked at each other, and said, let's do this. So we put this little group together in Atlanta, Georgia. We started performing all over the metro area in Atlanta, just like we did in Flint. Heard about this audition that was going on with this show called America's Got Talent. We went down, since it was in Atlanta, Georgia, we went down and we auditioned. Got down there, we harmonizing, everybody feeling us. They said, we love you guys, but we'd like for y'all to go audition in Miami. We like, what? So we did the same thing we did in New York. We jumped in the car, but this time it was a minivan, had a family and thing, <laughs> and we jumped in and we boost. It wasn't bumping that much. Girl, I was in the minivan. Girl, oh, oh, I'm, my fault. <laughs> so anywho, we get down there and we auditioned in Miami, Florida. They loved us. At least we thought. They said, well, let's, we're going to put y'all in these rooms, and then we're going to come in and tell y'all whether you made it or not. We sitting in there, we waited. They finally came in our room. They gave us them two letters, and that one word that we really didn't want to hear again, and they told us no. Well, throughout this journey of life and rejections, we search for purpose. We search for definition. So we converted to Islam. We started our company, Dawa International LLC. It's a multimedia company. And I wanted to continue my writing. So we started publishing a magazine, Prison World Magazine, which was tailored for inmates and their families. We found a way to merge entertainment and a message, be informative. And this is something that we did for 10 years. Now during these 10 years, we received an email from the editor of Ebony Magazine. I didn't think anything about it because we're already in media. Ebony Magazine, oh, okay, that, you know, that's cool, even though it's the, the black belt Bible uh, for black magazines, you know, grew up with it on our coffee table, that's fine. And it was a long email asking about the dynamics of our marriage and about our community work. I was like, okay, that's cool. I filled it out and I sent it back in. That was in September of 2011. The Tuesday after Thanksgiving, since we hadn't heard anything, we received a phone call. It was the editor of Ebony Magazine. And she informed us that we were going to be their Ebony Magazine's couple of the year for 2012. So I felt the need to contact my husband since he wasn't home and let him know something special was gonna be happening. 
And this is a guy who really doesn't get excited about anything, pretty much. So I gave him a call and explained to him and informed him, hey, guess what's going on? You know, something sweet's about to happen here. And what was your reaction? I just wanted to know, did them people know we were Muslim? We covered up and all. I was just wondering, did they really understand who they was talking about? Because we don't get those type of honors. We don't get selected in that type of way. And it wasn't a competition or anything. It was an honor for our marriage. We were coming up on 20 some years of marriage at that time. And because of our community work. So now that our marriage has been thrown into the spotlight, Everybody wanted to know what's the secret to marriage. Yeah, you guys must have the keys to marriage. I'm still trying to figure out what secret they talking about, y'all. <laughs> I ain't understand that question. So we decided to put it in a book. We wrote this book, Surviving Marriage in the 21st Century, 13 Easy Tips to Help You Get to 20 Years and Beyond. We self-published it in February of 2013, put it out there. And from the time we put it out there, it became a bestseller. It stayed on the Amazon bestsellers list, stayed on the Edmonton's bestsellers list. It was like craziness, something Blew me that away. we had never seen before. But my first grade teacher did say that I was a storyteller and that I could write, so I put that into play, right? You sure did. The very first year, we did 16 cities across the country with book signings and marriage work. Workshops. We thought it was a fluke. I thought you were trying to wear me out. Thanks. I wasn't used to all that traveling. Thanks. And then the next year, we did 14 cities across the country with marriage workshops and book signings. We thought this was crazy. We had actually not done anything like this before, and this book had transcended race, religion, genders, demographic. I don't think there's any religion that we've done not done giving marriage advice too, across no, the we done them all. I, I remember some Buddhists or something. Something like that. And it was at this time we were on a roll. We were not hearing those two little letters in that one word, one word anymore. No. Boy, I was so happy, y'all. We just thought everything was going. Wasn't on. nobody telling me no. <laughs> so then we started finding ourselves in more media, print, radio, television. Everything just really started happening for us. We even started finding ourselves in tweets and more media, book signings they still were going little across old the me. country, and we started speaking more. We started speaking and we started giving our message. We even found our way onto TLC with our own Guide to Love special. So Another shocker. Exactly. So things were really rolling for us. You would think that, okay, wow, we've come up out of all of this, and things were really rolling. But life always has that Shock, shock value for you and a different plan. In November 2018, our oldest son, Michael, Mikael, as we like to refer to him, passed away very suddenly. It was the biggest no that life threw at us. But we knew we had to pivot. We knew we couldn't stay stuck. Once again, that power of no, you gotta find a way to pivot. Exactly. Our faith teaches us that we have to pick ourselves up and we have to keep going. So what do we do? The very next month, we sat down, we made a vision board, we talked about, discussed our goals, we wrote it out, we planned it. In 2017, we started going after those goals. That's exactly what that no did for us. We had to find a different direction. So now, in 2017, going on to be a great year, we started finding ourselves in international destinations. We've done book signings in Dubai. We've been to Cuba. And even last month, we found ourselves in Bucharest. But let me tell you all something. Ain't no black people in Bucharest. <laughs> I think we made the two-person black quota for the whole month in Romania. Might have been for the whole year. Oh, we made that quota. That, that we were in Romania. So our message has become even more powerful now. You know, we have been told no a lot. We've been told no because we're black. We've been told no because we Muslim. I've been told no because I'm a female. 
But have you ever been told no because you're African American male, Muslim? No, I haven't been told no. Well, I have, girl. And that Not wasn't no. That wasn't nice. Not yet with that. But we are the first African American Muslim couple that appeared in Ebony Magazine as Couple of the Year. We are the very first African-American Muslim couple that is appearing on these TED Talk stages. And we are finding now that with all of our rejections and being told no, it will make you reflect. It and sure it will. will. build character. Sometimes being told no is for your It's going to build you up. <laughs> It will also make you find out how to do it for yourself as we put our book out ourselves. And will also make you understand the power of yes. And it will definitely make you pivot. Thank you.